I'm happy to have my good friend Barnabas back in here with me. Barnabas, good to see you, man. Yeah. <laughs> We've been working on separate things the yeah. last couple hours while I've been recording all this stuff. And uh, it's been a long day. It's like 6.31 p.m. Yeah. We got up at 6 and went swimming this morning. And and uh, as soon as we finish uh, sharing with you about maps, we're going to go out to P.F. Chang's, get some Chinese food. It's going to be great. Looking forward to it. But first, I said to Barnabas, I said, uh, I want to record the videos on maps. Then we'll go out. Let's let's do it. So we're going to teach you about maps. And maps are a key value store. And so a key value store allows you to store some values based upon some key. And they allow super fast, super efficient lookup. And so if I needed to store like... Uh, like phone numbers for our, all of my friends. The key could be like their first name. The value would be their f their phone number. And then I could just enter their first name and it'd find that phone number just really fast. Maps are really fast for doing lookups like that. And it's an unordered list, an unordered list. So I'll show you how it's an unordered list also. So uh, best thing though to understand maps is just to see them in action as always. And once we see them in action, we'll go look at the language specification. So to create a map, I'm at the Golang Playground. And I'm just going to do this variable m, which is what I often use for maps. And I'm going to do map, and then the key, and I'm going to make the key type string, and then the value will be an int, and then like that. So that's my composite literal. So remember, a composite literal is the type. There is the type. That entire thing is the type. It's kind of a big type, but that's the entire type right there. You get the type, the curly braces, and then you got a drop the values in there. And I'm just going to change this from Hello Playground to M. So now let's drop the values in. So to put the values in, you're going to put in the key, the colon, and then the other values. So the first one I'll do is James. And we'll just put James's age. How old do you think James Bond is? Like 32? 27? 32. Yeah. He's 32. He's got a little bit of maturity. And what about Miss Moneypenny? She's like he always goes for the younger women. So she's yeah. got to be like 27 or something, 24. And then you need this trailing comma. When we start doing composite literals that go line after line after line, which is the recommended practice for doing it, though sometimes people will do it on one line for abbreviations, recommended just for common coding on your team, go multiple lines. You always need that trailing comma. Let's format that and let's run it. And there we have it. The map's been printed out. It's a map, and then here's the first piece of data. That's the key, which is a string. There's the value, which is an int, and the key, which is a string, and the value, which is an int. Let's use that now. So I could do that map, and I want to access something by the key, so I just drop in the key, and I run it. And it's like, sweet, James's age is 32. It printed it out. But now watch this. Are you ready? Barnabas's age is zero. So if you enter a key and that, that, that value is not stored in your map, and I'm just talking slowly to make sure I choose my words right, if you enter a key, like I entered Barnabas, and there's no value stored in the map for that key, it will return the zero value. Well, that could be a little bit problematic if you are um, programming and you, you just like need some number back and you get a number back, you think, oh, this person didn't do anything, the number zero, but maybe they, there's no entry in the map for that person. So there's a way to check that. So let me check, let me show you how to check that. And so what we could do is instead of just asking for, you know, printing the value out there right there, we could ask for the value and we could also ask for whether or not this value actually exists in the map. And often the identifier for the variable to store this check is okay. And this is called, we're gonna to get to the, this is uh, the comma okay idiom. And it's called the comma okay idiom because look, comma okay. <laughs> and so when we check that map, we could do it like this and we could do uh, map Barnabas and we could check it. And now we could print both of those things out. And uh, I'm gonna print out the value and I'm gonna print out whether or not it's okay. And so I'm gonna run that. And so here the value that came out was zero, right? That was the zero value and it says false, this does not exist in the map. So that's a way you could check. And you could combine that into conditional logic like this and you could put this all into one statement on its own line and do a semicolon and then follow that up with check in the okay which is the bool for that if statement. 
And this is a very common idiomatic chunk of code that you're gonna see in Go. You're gonna have this statement right here and then a semicolon and you'll have the if statement and you could build it all like that. And so then you could say, hey, if that value exists, we're gonna print it and we'll just put a little special print in here saying this is the if print, right? That's the one that's in the if and then we'll print it out right there and we'll print the value. We don't have to look it up again because we have it right there. So we'll format all that and you're not gonna see this is the if print come out because it's not okay, so it's false, so it doesn't run. But if we were to put James in here, or Miss Moneypenny, which is a mouthful to spell, uh, put Miss Moneypenny in there, we'll format it and we'll run it, and that is gonna print. This is the if print 27. So that's the comma okay idiom. You got a, a couple of big pieces there, but I'm hungry and I wanna go eat. <laughs> so did a little bit fast, but you make a map with the key and the value this is the whole type. The key goes between the brackets. So you give it the type and then you give it the curly braces and that's the composite literal. You're composing the literal values together here and then you put the values in. When you put the values in, you separate the key, the key, you separate the key from the value with this, this colon and then you put a comma after each one. That's how you create your map. You can print it out. You could access things by key and you could check to see if that was actually in there, and then you can combine that all into one line with the comma okay idiom. So let's look a little bit at the language specification. I have highlighted some of the points here, and let's just read through them a little bit. If you have anything you want to say about these, you can just chime in. Mm, not really. Not really? Am I doing a good job? Yeah. Give me like a low A, a medium A. <laughs> doing okay. It's a. A? Yeah. Good. Doing good Strong work. A. Strong A. Awesome. <laughs> So maps are convenient, powerful, built-in data structure that associate values of one type, the key, with values of another type, the element, or value. The key can be any type for which the quality operator is defined. Maps hold references to an underlying data structure, just like slices. So if you pass a map to a function that changes the contents of the map, the changes will be visible to the caller. Maps can be constructed using the usual composite literal syntax, which we've covered. Sometimes you need to distinguish a missing entry from a zero value, so you use this deal here, the comma, okay, idiom. And uh, there it is, all being explained on one line. Though I think my code examples are a little bit more clear than some of the code examples in Effective Go in the Language Spec. Like some of those code examples, not only are you trying to show you like how this one thing works, but then yeah. you have to figure out like all the time zones to figure out the example. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, <laughs> I just want to learn one thing at a time. <laughs> so... That's maps. I'm sure I'll probably, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll think of something more to say about maps. If I do, there'll be another video after that. If not, you're gonna move on to some ninja questions, some hands-on exercises to reinforce everything you're learning. And then the, after the ninja hands-on exercises, we'll go into the next section where we'll learn about structs because there'll be several videos for that. Maybe for adding a plus uh, element. A plus element? To a map. Okay. You wanna do it right now or do it in our video? Let's do it, baby. Never mind. Oh. <laughs> so, adding a plus element, um, for example, dad. Um, okay, this is a wall different keyboard. <laughs> yeah, when you get onto a different keyboard, it's a trip. What? So, you're right. There. Just hit tab. Cool. Mm, okay. Wait, this is a... Uh, Maybe we lost some code. Mm, Command Z. Wait, this is a uh, well different uh, playground. Yeah, what happened to our example? Oh, I forgot to copy it out, too. Oh, here we go. I know how to get back up. No. This is not the map. Uh... Yeah, that was a previous example. Oh, we I, went backwards. Here we go. Come on, baby. Bring it up. Wait, what? We lost it. No. I'm gonna have to retype all that code. You Sorry. ready for you ready for a review? <laughs> no, it's cool. Let's do it. Let's review it. M colon equal map, and it's going to be uh, the key, which is a string. string. And then we're gonna have an int and then curly braces. I was supposed to always share it and I forgot to do that yeah. so I'm getting tired. And then we're gonna put in the values and so the values will be James 
and then colon, and it's meant to be because uh, uh, because uh, do. yeah uh, because uh, um, it's meant to be. Uh, the, you didn't close the string. Thank you. See, this is why pair programming is awesome. There we go. And now we could format print line and print that out. And then we yeah. could format print line and we could ask for things by index. And then we could uh, format print line and we could ask for Barnabas by index. And then we could do uh, the same thing right here and we could assign it to a value and OK and colon equals and that and then we could format print line each of those and we could do the V and the K and then oh and we're gonna have to also show ranging okay. over a map okay thank you and uh, and then we could do all that on one line yes it gets hot in here huh yeah the computers like a little heater and we could print print out the V and format it and run it, see if we made any errors. Cool, and now I'm going to copy that. It might not be exactly the same, but I think we got pretty I close. Think it's and really hands on same. number three, and slices, multi dimensional, and I think I'm right here with map. Cool. You know, it's been a long video. We're going to go get dinner. Yeah. Or maybe we'll do it in the next video before we go. <laughs> that was a review. <laughs>